Casey Jones has always been a central character in the Ninja Turtles mythos. However, there is one outlier version that, despite always being written by the same person, never seemed to have any kind of character development, even for the standards of the show. Today, I'll talk about the Fred Wolf version of Casey Jones, the outlaw hero. As I already explored in another video, Casey Jones was a character created in 1985 by Kevin Eastman for the Raphael micro-series one-shot. By the time the show was renewed for a third season, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird requested Casey Jones to be used in the show. This would have coincided with the release of the Casey Jones action figure by Playmates Toys. However, Fred Wolf believed the character was too mature for the cartoon. Whether it was for his language or his violent ways, they needed to adapt the character into something that wouldn't make parents angrier at them than they already were. As a part of this adaptation, the character was also never properly a part of the main cast, having only a total of five episodes in ten seasons. David Wise was the writer of all his episodes. However, much of his character's identity can be attributed to Pat Fraley, who voiced Casey Jones, emulating Clint Eastwood's portrayal in Dirty Harry. In the show, the character never removed his mask, and we never got a glimpse of his private life. There's one possible explanation as to why this happened. David Wise had the first few issues of the comic book, and assuming he also had the Raphael one-shot, then to him, very little was known about the character. It's plausible that he might not have seen the character become a core member of the main cast and develop over the years before his cartoon introduction. However, an early prototype of the action figure hinted at a removable mask. Had this toy been released that way, perhaps we would have seen his face in the cartoon. Casey Jones debuted in the show in the middle of a crime wave. The jump onto the screen took the basics of the character as imagined by Kevin Eastman, a vigilante inspired by many bad action movies. And just like in the comic, Casey's way of delivering punishment was always brutal, no matter if the crime was theft or jaywalking. His harsh delivery of justice immediately called the media's attention, and Byrne sent April to investigate the case a case she took just to prove it wasn't the Turtles who were breaking the criminals' rights. Casey's zeal for justice wasn't limited to the streets. He ventured into the sewers and confronted the Turtles, mistakenly thinking they intended to steal pepperoni from a grocery store. To be fair, considering the Turtles didn't have an income, his suspicions might not have been completely unfounded. Nevertheless, Casey realized they were green, and thinking they were Martians coming to invade Earth, he fled from the sewers. Realizing he was a danger to himself and others, the turtles followed him. By the time they found him, he was about to deliver justice to a poor homeless man sleeping on a park bench. Casey escaped again, but it was then that it dawned on the turtles that, considering Casey Jones fought crime and knew kung fu, the media would inevitably think they were the ones applying vigilante brutality. But things were about to get worse for them. Krang created an army of small insect bots that would allow them to take control of any machine. Their ultimate goal was to cause chaos in the city and help them control enough machinery to build a new supersized knucklehead. With the insect bots wreaking havoc in the city, April found herself attacked by her own scooter. The turtle saved her and explained the Casey Jones situation to her. Unfortunately, all of that would need to wait because the city was in absolute chaos the Turtles would have been massacred by an army of killing appliances had it not been for Casey Jones, who threw a refrigerator at the machines. Those law-breaking appliances had it coming. Casey Jones realized they were on the same side and joined the Turtles while they followed one of the insect bots to its source. What I want to know is, when do we get to break something? The Turtles and Casey followed the bot to Shredder's warehouse, where they saw Krang escape in the new Super Knucklehead to terrorize the city. Casey went after Krang, but was eventually captured. The situation was completely out of control between Krang's attack and all the killing machines. Where are the turtles? Why are they doing something? Hey, give us a break! We're doing the best we can! The turtles took the insect bot controller from the shredder, rescued Casey, and then asked him to make a hole in the super knucklehead. Once he finished that, they recalled all the bots and threw the controller inside. The bots completely destroyed the knucklehead, and the villains escaped. In the end, Casey left without saying goodbye, but we got a hint that he'd reappear in the future. 
His next appearance is perhaps his most iconic episode, Corporate Raiders from Dimension X. In this story, the city was under a wave of kidnappings of key businessmen across all industries. While this seemed like a problem outside of the area of interest of the Turtles, when one of the kidnappings led to a shortage of pizza dough, they went into action. It didn't take them long to discover that the kidnappers were part of another mega corporation known as Octopus Inc. They just needed to go undercover inside the company to figure out what they were doing there. Unfortunately, their being green was a problem. They needed a human who could apply for a job there without attracting too much attention. That was when they decided to call Casey Jones through a classified ad. If you're too young to know what that was, imagine a physical Craigslist in your local newspaper. Ironically, Casey went into the building with his mask on, completely defeating the purpose. But nothing was really as it seemed in this company. And after seeing his displays of violence, Casey was hired and later sent to do some training. In this special seminar, Casey realized everyone in the room was being brainwashed to become slaves of the board's chairman, which is probably what a cartoon writer would think about office jobs anyway. Unfortunately, Casey ended up tied to his chair, unable to put an end to the brainwashing. At the same time, the Turtles discovered that all the kidnapped businessmen and Octopus's employees were brainwashed, a conditioning that could be easily stopped with a splash of water. The Turtles went into the building and freed Casey Jones. They immediately discovered that the chairman's plans were about taking over the world. And who was this ambitious chairman? None other than the Shredder. Outnumbered, the Turtles were taken hostage. While trapped, they discovered another hostage, the original president of the company, Octavius Ogilvy, who couldn't be hypnotized because his hearing aid wasn't working. The Turtles freed themselves and Donnie fixed Octavius's hearing aid. After this, they discovered the blueprints for the Grand Arising that Shredder was planning at the Octopus Stadium. This event was just another way of bringing the Technodrome back from the Earth's core. Apparently, Octavius didn't know these were his plans when he started doing business with the Shredder. Were all the kidnappings necessary to do this Grand Arising? Probably not. The rest of the episode goes as expected. Donatello hijacks the plumbing system, and instead of raising the Technodrome, they break everybody's hypnosis. Shredder escapes, and Octavius promises to avoid making shady businesses ever again. Casey somewhat receded into a background role during this conclusion. The Turtles met Casey Jones again during a wave of strange robberies committed by some super strong criminals. It didn't take long for the Turtles to realize they weren't strong enough to deal with these criminals. They then received a call from April saying the Turtles received a crate at Channel 6 from Wally Airhead, a famous weightlifter who also owned the gym the criminals frequented. The Turtles couldn't help but feel tempted to lift more weight to get stronger and be able to defeat the criminals. However, Leonardo and Splinter disagreed with this approach. They had ninja skills. They didn't need physical strength to defeat them. Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo didn't care and started using the machine. Unfortunately, this was a trap, and the machine took them to Wally Airhead's gym. Knowing the turtles were probably there, Splinter asked Leonardo to contact Casey again, as a human could go to the gym without raising any suspicions. That is, a uh, human with a mask. Wally revealed his master plan to the kidnapped turtles. He wanted to give an ultimatum to the city. If they didn't pay him $500 million in cash, he would demolish every building, starting with the Supreme Court. Wally would do that with his Blockbuster, a gigantic boxing glove. They could carry that thing around thanks to their super strength, a superpower they gave themselves temporarily thanks to the Strongium 90 machine. And now, with the turtles in his possession, he wanted to also synthesize their ninja skills and strength. Of course, Casey found the turtles and freed them. Donatello hacked the Strongium 90 machine, intending to let the goons take another dose. But Casey couldn't wait compromised their advantage, and the turtles ended up buried under a pile of debris. Ready for their big hit, Wally and his goons took another dose, not knowing it was already altered. They eventually lost their strength, which was when the turtles kicked their behinds. And since Casey was always looking for something to break, it was his chance to destroy the blockbuster. After this adventure, it seemed like Casey Jones learned an important lesson about not jumping into dangerous situations again. Immediately after this realization, he started chasing a guy for littering. 
As a side note, the main goons in this episode were Hans and Fitz, a parody of Hans and Franz, two characters created by Kevin Nealon and Dana Carvey for Saturday Night Live. At the same time, Hans and Franz were a parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was already parodied in this episode by the Wally Airhead character. The characters' names are a pun. They're hands and feet. Also, the names Hans and Fritz were already taken by a comic strip. Casey Jones joined the Turtles' allies during the events of the now-classic episode, Night of the Rogues, an episode that deserves its own video. His last appearance was in the Season 8 episode, Cyber Turtles, which I already covered in this other video. Without going into great detail, in this episode, Krang discovered a starfighter possessing the legendary Firestar, a rock that contained the power of 1,000 suns. Thinking of removing the barrier with Dimension X, he brought the ship down and the Firestar was then stolen by the Shredder. The Turtles followed the fallen ship, where their Glaxon inhabitants confused them for the thieves. After seeing the Turtles get captured by them, April called Casey Jones for help. Casey Jones arrived and April explained that to rescue the Turtles, they had to retrieve the Firestar from the Shredder. Since Crane cloaked the Firestar, the Glaxons had no choice but to put on their cyber suits, allowing them to grow in size to cover more land. The Turtles witnessed this and freed themselves. They took some cyber suits and did exactly the same. A battle ensued. But as Crane started the procedure to merge the two dimensions, April warned the Turtles. Leo and Mikey went to the Hall of Science to help them, and Raph and Donnie were left fighting the Glaxons. Casey and April managed to get inside the building. On the rooftop, Casey defeated Rocksteady and then engaged in a sword fight with the Shredder until Mikey and Leo arrived. With the villains busy, Casey took the opportunity to defeat Krang, giving April the chance to take the Firestar, stopping the dimension merging. At the end of the episode, the Glaxons promised to take the Firestar to the center of the galaxy to destroy it. And that was the last appearance of Casey Jones. Depending on how strict you feel about certain spin-off universes, the Saturday Morning Adventures published an extra adventure with Casey in it. In this story, Casey was chasing a criminal, and after taking a shortcut through TCRI, he ran right into an experiment. Its strange energy hit him, giving him electrical powers that also allowed him to fly. Oh, and he was also super strong. Unfortunately, these electrical powers didn't come out of nowhere. Casey had to absorb all the electricity around him to use them, causing multiple blackouts across the city. Trying to prevent permanent damage to the city's infrastructure, the Turtles contacted Professor McGuffin at TCRI, who had an antidote for Casey. But he was running out of time, so he needed to take it before midnight, otherwise these powers would be permanent. The Turtles had a hard time trying to convince Casey to take the cure. But it was April who managed to get through to him by making him realize that he wasn't paying for that electricity, which made him a lawbreaker. Casey took the antidote and went back to normal. I'm sure there will be more stories with Casey Jones in the new book, but keep in mind that it will likely be considered its own universe over time. Casey Jones didn't return for the Turtles Forever movie or the team-ups with the 2012 Turtles. However, he did appear briefly in one scene. As I said, the character was always fun to watch, but it was a little disappointing that he never achieved the same status as part of the main cast as in all the other versions, especially after the success of the first movie. What do you think of this version? Do you prefer the Dirty Harry take over the classic Casey Jones? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the sewers.